Uh, I was requested to discuss with you how economic, social and cultural rights are being monitored uh, at the international level. First of all, you know, I'm sure that you're familiar how it happened that we have two different international treaties. We had one universal declaration on human rights, which I hope everybody knows when the declaration was adopted, because that day we celebrate as the day of human rights. It's 10th of December, all over the world, we all celebrate as human rights day. Because the day the Universal Declaration of the Dog. And as you, of course, I'm sure that you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to, to figure out who is using uh, your here. So those who do not uh, properly command the English language. Yes, so you prefer Russian translation. Okay, okay, okay. Quite many of you. But I'm sure that soon you will remove them and you will be you will be able to, uh, to use the, uh, to, to communicate with, uh, without that, um, uh, that help. But of course, we always need the help of, 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 of our interpreters. Normally, I used to speak very uh, uh, inscrutable, but I will try to speak slower. But if I'm forgetting, you can just warn me. Okay, I will look from time to time in the cabin, and they will, they will warn me that I'm too quick. Okay, so, uh, you know, uh, Universal Declaration, as you already know, of course, was adopted, but it was not a law. At that time, it was just a proclamation of what the United Nations wants to do with um, the human rights. Uh, but it, at that time, 48, we all, already the so-called Cold War started, and big powers could not agree on the binding legally documents. And, and it took them, as you know, it took them how many? 18 years, yeah? 18 years to, uh, to accept uh, binding, I should smile. <laughs> <laughs> be careful, because otherwise I need to take a correction, you know, I want to be. <laughs> yeah, um, that, to, to binding treaties, documents which are binding. But again, they couldn't agree. Should it be one document or should it be two? Uh, the idea of human rights is that human rights uh, are all interrelated. That we are not dividing human rights to uh, more important, less important, dealing with this and that. that all that human rights are covering all aspects of our life and they are very strongly interrelated, interconnected. So, logically, it should be one treaty. One treaty which, will be, which should have covered all aspects of our, of our life. But, for political reasons, and we don't need to dwell upon it, because I hope that it's more or less over, sometimes it's coming back, but, uh, but let us ignore it simply. They couldn't agree, so they said, okay, in that case, let us divide political uh, and uh, individual rights, uh, uh, and on one side, international covenant on civil political uh, rights, and the other one was, the, uh, uh, was economic and social cultural rights, adopted the same day, so it, it's, it sent a signal that international community, well, I don't, I hate this expression, international community, because there's no community, I mean, but do we have a better one? Since we don't have a better one to describe the uh, com uh, all nations who are working together, so we are using this famous phrase, international community. I hate it from my time when we were, when I was working in the former Yugoslavia, and everybody was blaming the uh, international community for this and that. Even when there were holes in the, in the road, they blamed international community, they couldn't uh, fix the, uh, the road. So, but, uh, but okay, let, let's, I'm just uh, explaining that why I don't like it, I have to use it, because there is no other mm, better, uh, uh, um, uh, but to, uh, to, to, to describe the system. So international community decided to adopt, which is the General Assembly of the United Nations, adopted two different, um, uh, two different treaties. So 
Of course, of course, we know that subject matter is different because one treaty is covering what we call uh, our freedom uh, and our rights um, as, as individuals uh, related to uh, our personal life, related to our, uh, everything is personal, in fact, but uh, related to <clears throat> also to political participation. And then the other one was dealing with economic and social aspect of our lives. So, from the legal point of view, is there any different or no? There were, uh, when you l read the, the treatise, you will see that in, in, in civil and political rights, we are supposed to um, implement them immediately. There is, uh, we, we are supposed to immediately, and we, there are very strict rules what we are supposed to do to adopt that law and to implement that law uh, without, uh, without delay. And we cannot mm, excuse ourselves. Uh, they all sorry, we cannot, uh, we cannot have a freedom of, of speech because we don't have enough money. And it's nothing to do with money, nothing to do with economic resources as far as uh, almost all political and, um, and civil rights are concerned. Different situation is with economic and social rights. If you have a central right like, uh, like, um, uh, like right to health, uh, uh, right to um, uh, education, uh, even, like, uh, even uh, uh, right to work, uh, so for that you may need some financial resources, economic resources. Not, you, you, we, you, you cannot expect that all countries will be able to implement all those rights on the same level because they simply, the economy is different, the uh, financial, uh, economic resources are different and therefore in economic and social rights we say that there is, they can be implemented progressively. So you, you don't expect everything to be done immediately, you can do it, do it pro progressively. That's just to see, to, to show you the differences of as far as uh, uh, category of those two rights and its, its, its legal status. Of course, some economic and social rights should be uh, implemented immediately. For example, uh, a right to collective bargaining or, or a right to have an equal pay for, equal, for work of equal value. There is no, uh, no excuse for, for not, not implementing that immediately. Some of them must be implemented. But, but in fact, many of, of those economic and social rights could be uh, implemented progressively. Now, what to do, what international community had, had to decide how to implement, how to monitor implementation of those treaties. Now, it's uh, human rights it's a very specific in treaties international. In majority situation, when international, you are, I wonder if you are mainly lawyers here or not. Yes. Yeah, mainly lawyers. So you know that when when treaty, uh, you are a lawyer because you raise your hand so very high. Ah, ah, okay, okay, very good. So you understand that normally in in the international treaties there is mutual interest. When I sign a treaty. Uh, when, when Poland is signing a treaty with the uh, Czech Republic, there is a mutual interest, for example, the, 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 the limitation of the border or whatever. So we are watching each other, how we implement that. But in uh, human rights treaties, there is treaties among states, but it's, when we sign this treaty, uh, um, when we join the treaty, uh, we, we agreed that we will do something for our own people, for people our, under our jurisdiction. So if the Poland violates some provisions, it violates, first of all, uh, victims are uh, 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 subject of those rights, but at the same time, that country violates its obligation vis-a-vis -vis Russian Federation, vis-a-vis -vis France, vis -a -vis all other states who ratified the treaty. So it's a very tricky, uh, tricky uh, system that we sign a treaty and based on those treaties, we. Uh, we are having obligation vis-a-vis -vis all partners who uh, ratify those treaties towards our own, own uh, people under our, I'm never saying our citizens because citizenship is nothing to do uh, with uh, human rights. Human rights should be uh, implemented vis-a-vis uh, -vis all people under, under jurisdiction. So when we are, I, I, while I'm here, I, I have almost all rights uh, with some exceptions, some exceptions, but 
Basically, I should be covered by all human rights provisions uh, uh, which are valid, which are in force uh, as a territory of, um, of, of the Russian Federation. So uh, they decided to establish certain, certain bodies, and this bo the task of those bodies was to monitor implementation of those uh, treaties. And as you probably know, we have right now nine, nine, yeah, nine uh, uh, treaties, and each uh, treaty has its uh, body who is uh, uh, responsible for monitoring. We'll come back to that. What does monitoring mean? But you know what was funny? Funny was that this particular treaty, economic, social, and cultural right covenant, originally did not envisage such a body. Such a body was established. Human Rights Committee, which, as you know, I was a member, was established according to international covenant on civil and political rights. The same goes for a committee against torture, committee against um, you know, uh, um, discrimination against, uh, against women, CEDO, uh, third committee on um, the racial discrimination, and, and all. In all other treaties, there was a body who was uh, already envisaged in the treaty, but not in that one. Strangely enough, at that time, the uh, uh, um, uh, countries who agreed to uh, on that uh, covenant did not envisage a treaty who was supposed to monitor uh, implementation. They simply believed, well, economic and social, okay, we agreed to that, but we do not take it too seriously. So uh, we don't need anybody, anybody who will be watching us. But fortunately, soon, late, uh, very, quite soon they realized that there is a need to monitor implementation of those uh, of that treaty as well, and based on the decision on economic and social council, I guess that you under, that you know something about United Nations, so uh, uh, you may be familiar with that system. That it is something body which is which supports the General Assembly. It's one step lower than General Assembly decided to establish. A, um, co uh, treaty on economic um, um, committee on economic and social rights. So it's the only committee which is not being established by treaty by by the by the resolution of the economic and social uh, council. And therefore, members, while all members of other treaty bodies are elected by state parties to, to the given covenant, all members to that particular uh, uh, committee are elected by the vote of the Economic and Social um, Cultural Council. So they decided to establish that body with a task to monitor. To monitor. How to monitor? How to monitor what Poland is doing in the freedom of, uh, in the right to education, health, uh, work, and so on and so forth. States were reluctant to give a very strong mandate. So they said, okay, they agreed that the country will be sending reports, every periodic report. So it's more or less every five years, uh, each country is supposed to send a report to the uh, to that body, uh, uh, describing what uh, steps have been done, and then the body will. Uh, I will come back to it later. How the body is evaluating this particular report. So the idea was just to have a reporting system, and this reporting system is obligatory to all nine treaties, all United Nations human rights treaties. Uh, later on, it was supplemented by system of individual complaints. Individual complaints, that, uh, but that was based on additional facultative uh, uh, procedure. So if, for example, all former communist countries quite quickly ratified uh, for example, International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. But they never ratified this optional procedure which was supposed to allow its, uh, um, uh, its I hate its wet citizen, its subject to its jurisdiction, to complain to, uh, those, uh, to those bodies. So Poland, uh, why ratified, uh, we ratified the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights in 77, but only in 91, after transition, we, adopted, we accepted this facultative procedure to send individual communication. But that individual communication was envisaged only for some treaties, like political one, uh, like, um, like uh, racial discrimination, later on uh, torture, and 
gradually all other have been also uh, and uh, all in, to all other treaties, uh, the facultative procedure of individual complaints were added. So right now, even right to the trial, Convention on the Right to the Trial, I haven't checked how many of uh, those optional protocols uh, of those UN treaties have been ratified by Russian Federation, but you can easily check it. I can only tell you that, for example, uh, uh, my country, Poland, originally was very enthusiastic when we Moved the transfer, it was, we ratified almost everything. Right now, oh, right now there is strong resistance. And I'm, while I'm fighting always that we should uh, ratify this optional protocol to economic and social countries, I said, no, 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 we don't want. We, we, why? And uh, all, all to other, why, why countries are more and more reluctant? For me, it means that this procedure is a successful one. Because if it wouldn't be successful, countries would have ratified, ah, let's ratify, there is no problem with those individual complaints. But that individual complaint system in many other treaties started to be successful. It means that victims of violation of human rights were able to uh, send a um, uh, complaint and was, and was able to win successful, uh, successful decision of that body. So some kind of, oh, and uh, that, that was also a case of my country. Uh, why we are losing, we, uh, we are not discussing here uh, European convention, but we are losing a lot in, in Strasbourg. Of course, the uh, um, uh, Russian Federation is losing much more, and much more serious than we, but still, we are losing. But of course, but it is a price which we have to pay for being a part of international the community of countries who respect the human rights. So, this individual complaint procedure, so far, uh, it's not being very widely accepted. But uh, with the pleasure, with the pressure, with the pressure of uh, uh, non-governmental organizations, the pressure of, uh, of uh, civic society, which I like to call it, and you will be part of the civic society who will put the pressure to your country. Let's ratify this optional protocol. I hope that in 10 years' time, when, when your successor will come to that school, they say, oh, we have ratified all. And also, when somebody will come from Poland, they say, yes, yes, we also ratified this. So that is the, that is, but that, that system I will not be uh, discussing a lot because, as I said, it is still in, in so to, we call it in statu nascenti. It means being already being created. Kakitos kazai na ruskom jaziki in statu nascenti. Procesie działania, ili tak można skazać na, na wierno. Da. Ok, so, uh, so that is the, uh, that is the, the, so we would like to right now come back to the, uh, to the, uh, uh, but let, let me also give some, some thoughts to the question of, uh, of uh, nature, of nature of, uh, of, of obligation. What does it mean, uh, what is, what the country, Let's, let's, uh, let's keep the example of uh, which is safe uh, for, for Poland. What Poland is supposed to do when it ratifies that covenant? As I said, it is not expected that, uh, that we will be uh, immediately able to implement all, all, possible, all possible provisions. But, uh, uh, but uh, um, it is expected uh, originally uh, it was um, uh, said that uh, the country is um, uh, obliged, uh, is, is under obligation of conduct and obligation of result. Conduct and result. So, we, when we say that there is a right to work, we need to oh, find some, uh, some elegant gentleman came with ties. Privet, dragie kolegi. Привет. Конечно, кто-то пришел с элегантным таким галстуком. Потому что все остальные здесь, к сожалению, так свободно. Но одеты, но... О, тут же есть джентльмен. Я извиняюсь, я тоже должен здесь. Но, к сожалению, такая прекрасная погода, что не... это тяжело было бы взять этот галстук. Но так, so, uh, obligation... Uh, to, uh, to conduct and result. So it means that we need to do something to implement right to work. And in some cases, we need to pro uh, uh, show what we have done 
to, the, to um, achieve it. But that was not at the, at the original stage of implementing of the uh, covenant, that what was, uh, what was said uh, about uh, implementation, but I said it was not that very uh, successful. So right now, the committee, the committee is um, a adopted so-called uh, so free fault typology, free fault typology of obligations. So there are three different types of uh, obligation under economic, social, and cultural rights uh, treaty. First of all, is to respect. 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 Uważać, da, uważać, uważać. Co to znaczy? How, what do you think when, when I said that st state party is obliged to respect? If I would ask somebody who looks very intelligent, all of, the, all of you look very intelligent, of course. <laughs> but uh, what do you think? All the gentleman is already checking in his internet. That's, that you know, that is my, my always biggest problem with students when I'm, when I'm uh, teaching. I'm teaching constitutional law and international human rights law. Uh, and when I ask some question, I realize that they immediately, and before I finish, they already know the answer. Uh, well, so, there's this new technology. I, I, I. Luckily, I'm retiring soon. That will be a task for my, uh, our successor, how to cope with this uh, internet system. Uh, no, we cannot block it. I don't know. It's, it's useless. I mean, why not? Why not to use it if you, you know how to use it and, and you find the proper answer? So respect. What to do about respect? So uh, the committee, uh, when uh, describing respect, that the state party is under obligation to refrain from interfering directly or indirectly with the enjoyment of covenant rights and in some situation means that some rights will be, uh, will be um, uh, immediately effective, will be immediately uh, uh, effective. When, for example, a classical example could be uh, anti-discrimination clause. The state party is under direct obligation to prevent any discrimination based on different criteria on different criteria. You know that is the, um, by the way, I just make a digression. I'm trying to keep my digressions short and I'm trying to return to the original because that is, the, you know, the old, the old fault of some elderly professors that I don't consider myself very elderly, but, I, but I'm, I am, in fact. Um, so uh, that you start digression and you f uh, what you started. Well, so I will come back to the typology, but digression about anti-discrimination clause. You know, in the covenant, I, kn I know that you have the text of the, yeah, they have a, you have a, uh, <coughs> a text of the international covenant on, on economic and social cultural rights, and there are different type of uh, criteria which are supposed to be, uh, which are supposed not to be a uh, reason for, uh, for the discrimination, like race, language, religion, political opinions, <coughs> sex, uh, and other criteria. And but it always is an, another status. And this another status is a very important uh, uh, open gate for including those uh, um, features of us which became more and more uh, relevant for anti-discrimination clause. The recent one, for example, for me, very relevant is discrimination based on age. You are not, uh, uh, but discrimination based on age goes both ways for young people and for elderly people, not, not to be discriminated. They are very interesting, the already decisions of the, uh, for example, Luxembourg Court of European Union, when they are dealing with this discrimination based on, on age. Uh, but that is, this different status is also, oh, the international covenants are open. And I, <coughs> I'm telling you that when you look into your constitution, you probably have the same clause, anti-discrimination clause, and in your, uh, to be frank, I don't know your constitution, but I'm sure that it, it, because it's almost all constitutions all over Europe and, and, and is the world. In fact, that there are mm, a list, there is an open list of uh, features which are not supposed to be reason for discrimination. But when we 
were about to adopt our constitution in Poland, that was <clears throat> mid-90s. We were almost the last country of the former uh, communist countries who adopted a new constitution because we had a very strong uh, struggle <clears throat> between left and, and right. <clears throat> so they couldn't agree on many, many things. Um, and one of the things were, were this anti-discrimination clause. To list those criteria or, or not to list them. Uh, and uh, at that time, second half of the 90s, it was already obvious that we, if we were to list all criteria, like, as I said, said race, religion, eh, we, at that time, we had to also enclose uh, uh, sexual orientation. And our, our conservative uh, 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 politicians said, no way. Oh, no, 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 then we cannot accept a very good Catholic country that we are having sexual, it's promotion of sexual, oh, it's stupid, it's not promotion, but, uh, but they, they, do, they, they blocked it. So we say, okay, let's do it, just open. Discrimination is forbidden on all possible grounds. Ah, they can, oh, fine, we, we can live with it. What we don't need, we don't want to have in our most important law the expression sexual orientation. That's, that's how it goes, you know, that's how it goes. Uh, um, uh, unfortunately, and uh, this problem is always alive right now. We are uh, having all big discussions about it. But there is an interesting situation in your country, who are much more, more openly liberal uh, 20 years ago, and it became much less, uh, much more strict uh, right now. I don't know, is it based on the social feelings? It is, you know, it's always a big problem. I had a, um, I just explained to, one, to, to somebody that I had a colleague, in my human rights, uh, post human rights center, she uh, graduated uh, Voronezh University. Is there anybody from Voronezh here? Yeah, B a very nice idea being there, and a very good university. And she graduated um, uh, a law faculty. And I must say that those who graduated many Russian universities are very good, good in methodology. She was really very good. But then she uh, uh, moved to Poland. And she did her uh, doctorate, PhD, uh, in, 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 at our Institute of Legal Studies. And she uh, became my, uh, my colleague, my younger scholar in my human rights center, Lena Kondratieva Brzezik. She married a, a Polish guy. Um, and, uh, but the, then she divorced. So she, uh, when she joined us, she was, she was already single. And then um, she um, uh, wrote a book on the, uh, on the right to life, describing the beginning of the right to life, the question of, of mainly of, of, of uh, abortion. And when she came, she came from a Russian, um, uh, I would say even uh, let, let Soviet tradition of very free access to abortion. And she was shocked that in Poland we are far more, more restricted. So she uh, described how was the situation in, at the international level, what are international standards, let's try to compare. But when, when she was about to finish, she realized that the, the Russian is moving, shit, even surpass our system. And, and uh, so, uh, that, and that is very, 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 um, uh, uh, I'm looking for a proper expression, not to offend anybody, but a strange, I would say, in the development when we are, uh, we are becoming very, very restrictive in many aspects of, as we are, we are, we used to be more liberal, right now we are by far less. By we, I'm referring to uh, society, to majority of the society as such. Or maybe it's not majority, but it's those who are very outspoken. So uh, the, uh, the system is becoming more and more, more and restrictive. So, and then poor, uh, I have to finish it, poor, my poor Yelena, unfortunately she died in a, a, a train accident, a very bad train accident, uh, three years ago, close to Krakow. <clears throat> and, and so she, is, uh, she came back, unfortunately, uh, uh, not on her own wheel to Voronezh, and I, I was there for, for her uh, uh, burial <clears throat> service. And, so, but, uh, but then I, I just uh, wanted to, uh, to, to use uh, her example as showing that there is a, also uh, quite a, um, a change in the mood uh, in, in the society. Also. I don't know how it is in, in, in your society, but I, I know that also Russian law became very more and more restrictive. 
as far as the abortion system is concerned. And I don't know, is it supported by the majority of population or is it just based on the kind of a perception of the uh, ruling um, elite? So now uh, I, I started to say that there is free, uh, there is this new free fold typology of economic and social rights. First is respect. So we know respect just to refrain, not to do anything which may jeopardize uh, uh, jeopardize implementation of the rights. Second, it's protect. Protect. Hmm. What does it mean, pr uh, protect? Protect is to prevent third parties from interfering with the right recognized in the, uh, in the covenant. It's very important because, you know, normally human rights its rights vis-a-vis, -vis, it's called a vertical effect. It's my right vis-a-vis -vis authorities. And I'm supposed to be protected from the possible interference to my right vis-a-vis um, right, uh, 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 -vis authorities. I remember when I was working in the, in the former Yugoslavia and I, I had a very good colleague who was running the office, like Richard is running in Moscow, he was running office in, in Zagreb. I, who used to be a journalist, very clever, very, very, uh, very intelligent guy. But once he told me he was Sasha, so he said, oh, could you explain me what is about this? I don't really grasp the, 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 the nature of human rights. What is it about? I, and I told him, listen, uh, um, Sasha, if I will come to you and hit you in the face, do I violate your human rights or not? What do you think? Do I violate his rights by the very fact that I hit him? Yeah, everybody say, yeah, of course, you are uh, beating the gay. Well, 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 not at that moment. You know when it will become, of course, it will be a violation of his other rights. Personal rights are true. But human rights aspect, only when it will come. When he will go to police and say, listen, Yerushevsky just hit me. Oh, Yerushevsky, oh, no, no, he's such an important person, we don't touch him. Ah, that is violation of human rights. Because protect, protect the, uh, the, the authorities are obliged to protect him. So if they were not able to stop me, at least they should punish me, uh, to investigate the, uh, the incident and to punish. So, uh, so that is when, when uh, the authorities are involved. That when, when, uh, then when human rights uh, aspect uh, comes uh, to the scene. So uh, protect means that the state is also uh, responsible for action of third parties. If I am working for private, uh, private um, company, so that private, uh, that private company can easily violate m many of my, uh, of my rights. And that the state is responsible to make sure that this private company is not, for example, discriminating me or cutting my, 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 my social benefits or my working rights and so on and so forth. So that is the second aspect of this uh, uh, typology, which is respect. And, and uh, the first one is fulfill. Fulfill. So we have, uh, we have respect, protect, and fulfill. And fulfill is divided into two imperatives. First, to facilitate, meaning that the state part must proactively engage in activities intended to strengthen people's access to and utilization of resources and means to ensure enjoyment of rights. I, just, I read this from the, uh, the so-called general comment of the committee. I will explain what does it mean. Uh, so it's the state must proactively engage. So my, and of course the, the covenant says that you must do, do, to do it, you must to do it uh, um, in accordance with your resources. So you, we cannot expect uh, that the country will uh, do mir miracles, but they are, they are obliged to use the all, uh, all uh, available resources to, uh, to, uh, 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 to improve the, the economic and social and cultural right. And then, also, in some situation, uh, uh, this must, uh, some rights might, must, should be directly, uh, directly uh, immediately uh, implemented. Of course, uh, the obligation to fulfill will, will always be progressive. 
um, always, always be progressive. So it means that with the passage of time, the, the states are requested to do more and more. Now, now how to, uh, uh, let's come back right now to the system of these, um, of these reports. When a uh, uh, state party, uh, as I said, is obliged to provide, uh, provide a, a specific report, that report is being sent to this, uh, the, 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 to this body, treaty body, and that treaty body is analyzing how it works. The, your country is sending a report, and the report is reaching the Secretariat of the United Nations. Uh, <coughs> The secretary is evalu evaluating, reporting everything is there, and then the committee is normally is one member of the committee, so-called rapporteur. I used to be rapporteur for many countries, in, in particular, when I, in, in my time as a human rights committee, I was normally rapporteur on, of Russian-speaking countries, because at my time, I was the only a Russian-speaking member of the committee. Of course, the um, official languages are Russian is one of those, but normally the committee works in English and French. Uh, but if documents are being sent in, in Russian, they are being translated. But of course, it takes time and resources. So uh, when, when, we, um, uh, when I was dealing with um, the Russian-speaking countries, I was simply, they, they were sending me immediately, so I was able to read them before other colleagues uh, got the translations. So, and then, and of course, it's known, it's publicized, that the report was supposed to be uh, on public display, and civic society, like all of you, are invited to comment. Of course, not all of you, uh, but if any of you have ever heard of any uh, organization who is dealing with, with human rights, or oh, listen, hey, Извините, пожалуйста. Hello, gentlemen. Вы хотите спросить что-нибудь? Пожалуйста. Не? А я думал, что вы где-то... Знаете, мой проблем есть, что я, меня очень мешают, когда люди разговаривают не о, 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 о том, что мы здесь разговариваем. Когда хотите, вот, можно, пожалуйста. Okay? Please don't, don't, no, sorry for that, but I'm do, doing it also with judges. You know, some, I'm quite often t uh, having a seminar for Polish judges, and they're also coming to, uh, to, to, to have this uh, um, uh, lecture on, on the CV, but don't pay any attention. In that case, I, I will sign that you are there, but please go out, because otherwise, you know, I'm looking at this, what they are talking about. Hmm. If there will be two men, I'm seeing that they are talking about football game. But uh, which was recently, I, uh, I, I regret that I didn't come five days ago to Kazan because that five days ago Polish volleyball team had the pleasure to win against Borna in Kazan. In, <laughs> but unfortunately, I wasn't there, <laughs> so I couldn't I couldn't support them. Um, so uh, that report is being publicized and non-governmental organizations are sending their comments, how they see the situation. Who else? Also, all other United Nations bodies, uh, United Nations uh, organizations are also sending, uh, sending their information about uh, this aspect of, um, of, 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 uh, uh, of, of rights which are under discussion. So the rapporteur, rapporteur, is uh, uh, having all possible documents, all possible documents, and uh, based on those documents, based on report, uh, the committees are sending questions to the government to be answered during the meeting with the, uh, with the state party. Then the, there is a meeting, official meeting, are being held uh, in Geneva and New York. Normally, two sessions are in Geneva, one session in, in New York, three week session, and uh, with one country is being dealt during one, uh, one full day. Starts from 10 to, to 1 and then from 3 to 6 p.m. <clears throat> and then, uh, and this is open. This is open uh, um, uh, uh, to everybody, so NGOs, uh, uh, but the questions, 
can be asked only by members of the treaty body. So if you would be, I think that those of you who are interested in that system, and I know from Richard that some of you are, um, are studying it, uh, doing a master program, but maybe some of you are already in, in Geneva, or not yet, but I'm sure that you will be, uh, that you, you should have a chance uh, to go to Geneva and to participate in such a, um, a, a meeting. It's quite interesting. <laughs> I must tell you that uh, when, uh, during my time, and it was, it was uh, end, of, um, end of 80s, my first term, I, I served two terms. My first term was end of 80s. Uh, human rights committees, not economic and social, but political and civic rights, was the time when, uh, when the Russian Federation came. And for Russian Federation, we allocated not just uh, one whole day, but almost two days, because it was the time of the Second Chechen War. And uh, um, second of, uh, no, it was nine, uh, end of 90s, so maybe it was the end of first uh, Chechen War. And the, uh, in the Russian Federation, normally um, there is a deputy minister of foreign affairs who is the heading of the delegation, but the member of the delegation was Kadyrov, but Kadyrov senior, not the junior, not the, not the, uh, not the uh, president, the human rights defender <coughs> who is the president of Chechnya, but his father. His father was a member of the uh, Russian Federation delegation, and there was plenty of NGOs. The opposition train was sitting there in front uh, line, but they said nothing. But we asked questions, and then Kadyrov said, hmm, I see those questions are being provoked by those. And he pointed at them, if you have problems with us, tell me, tell me in, uh, back to our country, not here. I will remember you. So it became, so it became a big scandal. We, we broken up the session, and it was make, that he was not supposed to to do some some uh, uh, warning signals to the uh, to the non-governmental organization sitting in the UN office. Uh, so it became oh, well, and he Apollo, but he was he really behaved like a kind of a very I don't know the proper English expression for such behavior. And how um, that is very interesting. Um, uh, um, how um, how that um, this uh, dialogue uh, is because and there is a dialogue. It is not a court. The organization, uh, the, the delegation of the country is not coming to defend itself. That's what I'm always saying. Mm, I remember one when Ukraine came it was early Ukraine, um, as I said, 90s yet, and they started to defend everything. I mean. You know, I told them uh, during the lunch break, so don't do that. You are not supposed to, you may say, listen, we are not able to protect freedom of, of, of uh, assembly because uh, of this and that. So we under, the, the committee understands uh, there are some reasons for, doing, for having restriction of this or that. So you have to explain why you are not able and then the committee will simply pronounce its opinion, its suggestion what to do. I will show you how it works uh, because, as, as I said, at the end of this particular meeting, uh, I would like us to look at the uh, uh, report of the, uh, of the Russian Federation. Uh, and so that is the, um, uh, on economic and social rights. So that's how it works. And then the committee is simply, at the end, the committee is uh, expressing, is expressing uh, opinion, say, well, we think that, that is your problem. And you have to solve that problem by this and that. Now, what happened afterwards? Because that so far seems not a big problem. You know? The country is coming, the committee is uh, uh, assessing the uh, effects of the country's policy, and the committee is proposing certain steps to be taken to uh, fulfill those rights. What, what next? That is a crucial point, because it's not, uh, it, it's not enough to uh, produce a nice report and nice uh, concluding. The name of the document, which is uh, produced by the, uh, um, um, the treaty, is concluding observations. Concluding observations. It's not enough to produce. What else? So every committee is, not, is uh, one or sorry, two members are so-called follow-up reporters follow up means that uh, 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 members are responsible to look what is going on after that. 
And uh, sometimes the country is requested, please, could you send us in a year time your proposal, what you are going to do to solve, for example, a uh, uh, right to health? Are you doing something about this right or not? What kind of measures? Uh, legislative or um, uh, financial measures uh, you want to allocate to improve that system? And then the country is sending, and then the rapporteur looks at it, and if there is a problem, sometimes uh, the, uh, the, uh, he is meeting with the um, ambassador or meeting with um, going to the country, trying to, to uh, make this process going, trying to make sure the country knows that it's under more or less. I'm not too, too quick? Ah, okay. He says I'm not. <laughs> uh, so uh, the, the country uh, knows that there is a constant kind of constant pressure. But of course, there is no real, uh, um, real measures to force the country. There is no real measures. Uh, uh, the international system of monitoring is based on a mutual trust, on understanding that if the country has accepted to be part of that treaty, that country will do its best. Of course, we know the limits, we know the uh, um, uh, um, uh, both economic limits, political limits, but still, there is a goodwill to implement. Therefore, there is no, pra in, in particular, the economic and social rights system. We don't have any uh, very forceful means to, uh, to, uh, to, introduce, to, to, to force the country uh, to implement those recommendations. So if those recommendations have not been implemented, then in next, during the next period, next five, six years, it's never five, it's all because the, the, the committees are always in delay. There are too many countries to come in, and, and uh, so uh, normally it's probably seven years. So in seven years' time, when the country will come back, the country will ask, why you haven't done this and that? But that is the only practical uh, um, tool which they have. So you may be disappointed. I remember I had, uh, when we had a during my second term, we had um, uh, the, uh, the United States, America, of America came with a report and it was uh, uh, closely after, after the disasters in New Orleans, when there is a big flood and there was dramatic, dramatic uh, violation of many human rights during that, um, uh, during that disaster. You know, and thus, uh, so we, uh, we were having uh, meetings with um, uh, civic society, with non-government organization with us. The, the delegation came to Geneva, but when we had a uh, previous session in New York, we invited um, NGOs so they, they shouldn't have to go, go to, to Geneva uh, to discuss with them. And they were really very critical. And we use about, about the human rights situation in, in this, not only vis-a-vis -vis that particular event, uh, but also to many other aspects. And then we, the delegation came. We had also, also, also two days, because for the big countries, it's always two days is necessary. And in many aspects, the American delegates, no, 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 we, do, we don't agree with you. We don't do that, we don't do that. So I asked later on, I ask the, uh, this non-governmental organization, why you are so eager to come um, to, uh, to that, uh, as you see, uh, uh, your government uh, already bluntly said, no, no, we will not uh, uh, accept this. They say, yeah, okay. But we have your uh, observation as an internationally valid document. And you use this document in many areas. We can, it allows us to better reach the public audience. We, can use, uh, we are using it with our media context. And it, it works. It may not work on the whole scale, but sometimes we are even using it in litigations, in courts, when some uh, the problems is relevant to the concluding observation of the committee. So we believe that it is useful. And the same, uh, I remember, 
uh, was my first shock when we had a Japanese delegation and 300 Japanese came from Tokyo to Geneva to participate in that very meeting. And I also asked them, well, come on, why are you coming to Geneva? Can you do it? Can, can it was lawyer association and other associations. I asked them, why? Why you are coming here? Maybe you, should, you cannot influence them back at home? See, no. He told, they never listened to us uh, in Tokyo. But when we, when we are saying this in Geneva, ha, they are much more afraid because they are afraid of international publicity. So we absolutely know that whatever is done by, by, uh, by uh, that body, it may have a um, positive effect for our uh, dealing with uh, government at the uh, domestic level. So I say don't, we should not judge effectiveness of those procedures only through the uh, formal uh, for, uh, formal position of that concluding observation. I said those formal position is rather law. It's not has a, a binding legally, but it's not like a judgment of the court. Uh, but as you know, even uh, binding judgment of the courts are not being implemented by some countries which I don't want to name them uh, at this stage. Uh, and um, so, uh, 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 so uh, this effects of those documents are much more important than form, the, the formal, uh, formal uh, position. So that's how, uh, uh, how the system works at the level of, uh, of uh, what is, so treaty body, additionally to this concluding observation, are also issuing general comments. And for those of you who are interested, for example, how to understand the right to work, or right to health service, or right to participation in the culture. If you want to know the details that are given in the general comments of treaty bodies. There is some dispute in the literature to what extent treaty bodies are, to what extent they're interpreting, or sometimes they're legislating. That is, you know, those of you who are lawyers and uh, are familiar, it's always a big question. To what extent our courts are only interpreting or to what extent our courts are creating sometimes by the uh, judgment, the new legal obligation. But that is a uh, subject for interesting uh, PhD seminar, which we are not going, I'm not going to bother you with that. So uh, general comments are also important. You can easily uh, access them in the, in the internet and they will give you a, a picture of uh, how uh, the treaty would understand different rights. Now, don't think that economic and social rights and cultural rights are being dealt only under that particular covenant, which I referred at the beginning, and only by that committee. As I said at the beginning, all human rights are in, 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 uh, interdependent inter and interrelated. So, my human rights committee is also sometimes dealing with economic and social rights. In particular, in one aspect, in aspect of non-discrimination. Because in the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, there is an article, Article 26, which prohibits discrimination. And discrimination not only vis-a-vis -vis rights covered in that covenant, that all particular rights. So we had a complaint from the Netherlands, for example, about inequality in pension system, or, or we had a, from Australia on discrimination uh, in a social service based on, on sexual orientation, and so on and so forth. So also other bodies are dealing with economic and social rights. The same goes for CEDAW. Committee on, uh, discrimination, um, Committee on the, the discrimination on prohibition of the discrimination against women, uh, that CEDA also is dealing with a lot of economic and social rights vis-a-vis -vis, vis -vis women. Position in the workplace, for equal, equal <coughs> uh, pay for equal work. So, uh, as the same goes for Committee of Russian Discrimination, uh, uh, to the less extent, maybe Committee Against Torture is not that much involved, but, uh, but also Children Committee of the Rights of a Child. So, as you see, you, if somebody is, for example, will be working on dissertation, 
right to work, uh, standards of the right to work is the uh, international human rights law. That person should look not only into the uh, practice of the Committee on Economic Social Rights, but also other treaty bodies. Other treaty bodies um, uh, who are dealing with, uh, uh, with, uh, 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 with other uh, treaties, but also have a reflex on, on economic and social rights. So, um, uh, when uh, the whole, because the, 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 the idea is that the, the all rights, and there is, you know, the famous declaration of the Vienna uh, Conference on um, Human Rights in 93, underline the same. That all human rights are strictly interrelated. Don't try to divide them and don't try to make a, a hierarchy. The one right is more important than the other one. Of course, when come to the single case, sometimes you need to decide which right can be restricted in order to implement the other one. But that will be always based on the individual case. There is no general rule saying that you cannot say the general rule that right to, right to life is more important uh, than the right to health. And sometimes right to health is just uh, to implement that right is, is necessary to protect right to life. So it is always based on the on individual situation. There are no general rules saying that this is character of rights, more important, less important. Uh, that is, uh, uh, therefore, the whole system, the whole system, uh, of the United Nations is dealing with, uh, um, with uh, you, you will meet um, uh, economic and social uh, rights references in also all, all, all treaty bodies. When he is waving like this, I'm always saying that he is he's trying to, to show me something on the board. Yeah, but not, but he's lucky because he has a better system of... <laughs> uh, okay, now listen, but there is now also very interesting, very interesting one. So that what I was referring is based on so-called treaty system. But in the United Nations, as United Nations, as you know, we have we always say have two pillars, and right now we have been discussing one pillar, which is treaties. It means internationally, it's a law. It's a law, of course, decision of a. Uh, of treaty bodies are being considered as so-called soft law. Soft law, you know the expression. Miakie prawo to śmiesznie. To, że na polskim językiem, na polskim językiem upotrzebiają się kiedy tu expression soft law. Nikt nie mówi miękkie prawo, bo to idiotycznie. Uh, soft law in English sounds slightly slightly less uh, uh, awful <laughs> than in our Slavic languages. Uh, Prawa should be tough and not soft, I mean. Dura lex. <laughs> uh, um, no, ale, no, but, you know, but um, the problem is that sometimes something is being pronounced as the norms, but they don't have a real uh, uh, protection of sanctions. Therefore, we call them soft law. So the decisions of those treaty bodies should be considered as sort of soft law. They can, they uh, are helping us to, um, to reconstruct the normative structure of our obligation. But there is not, there is one pillar. And the other pillar, it's political system. Political system, which is uh, based, we call it a charter system, whatever, which is based on the charter of United Nations, which as you know, the minor principles is to protect human rights. And based on that charter, which is also very interesting, we will not have a, a lot of time to, this, to, 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 uh, to uh, describe it, but one of the bodies which are very interesting is Human Rights Council. Have you heard about Human Rights Council? Yes or not? Have you heard? Oh, she heard. If she heard, so I'm, I, her colleague also heard. You have also? Human Rights Council? Soviet po prawom człowieka, da? Wy izwiestne, wam izwiestne, da? You know what, they know, da? Oh, Richard is confirming. Yeah, okay. And, you know, with this body, you have a very interesting, which is, jak na rosku gawiliad, UPR? UPO. UPO, UPO, a nie UFO. 
<laughs> opa, opa, opa. Have you, have you seen any opa, opa uh, UPR? Uh, opa sta, um, dla mnie uh, zwłoczyć niemnożko. Uh, tak. Uh, Uczy będzie uh, UPR, English. Uh, Universal Periodic. Have you seen any document produced by the Council? Has you seen? Da? A, почему нет? Знаете, вот, у тех, которые есть здесь интернет, можно посмотреть. Access. Russian Federation, discussion of the Russian Federation was in, I guess, two, three years ago. I guess, хиба 91. 2011. 2011. You know what is this? That in, if you know what is this, so you know what is, they know what is UPR, huh? Okay, so every country, and that is very interesting. Very interesting when you see questions being asked by countries to the country who is under, uh, under pressure. Many of them are related to economic and social rights. I have them even in my computer, but we don't have time to look at that. But that is, I was laughing, you know? For example, I remember when Poland came some time ago, you know what the Russian Federation as the country as uh, giving suggestion. The Russian Federation uh, suggests to Poland that we should improve uh, conditions in our prisons. So I love it. Because I say, uh, people were, were, were oh, how, how they dare to say, look at their condition. I mean, don't do this, don't do this. It means that they understand that the conditions in prison are important. Of course, they are not able to do it for many reasons, but they know it's important, so they ask us to, to improve. <laughs> when I, you know what the question, if you, but you would be laughing. You know, the, what Kazakhstan asked the question, uh, put the question to the Russian Federation during UPR. Question and, and suggestion. Do you know what? That the Russian Federation should, should uh, be more um, stringent to fight corruption. <laughs> so that's what Kazakhstan suggested to Russian Federation. You are under co your, your corruption is too big. <laughs> right, and that would be funny because it's all it like this. It's uh, it's and a hundred of them of those because every country is um, asking. And then as a result, at the end, the country under. Uh, under uh, scrutiny is, uh, is uh, uh, reacting and is uh, uh, saying, okay, we'll do that, we won't do that. But that is also quite interesting, interesting uh, mm, mechanism because uh, mm, mm, uh, um, under this mechanism, you can assess all human rights of the country regardless if the country is ratified a given treaty or not. And of course, it's, what is important? It's being publicized. Each of you, I, I invite you, because it is in Russian language, you can, you can write it in English as well, but you can look into this, so you will be seeing what international community is, uh, uh, how the international community is um, assessing uh, um, the human rights problem, problems in the given country, and, 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 and how, what is the reaction of the, of the governments to that particular, um, to that particular uh, requests. So it also economic and social are also covered by that system. It's not only it's not only uh, uh, human rights council, but also the system of special procedures. You, they also know. Right? So you know that in the special procedures system you have so-called special reporters, and they are all many of them are dealing directly with uh, with uh, economic and social and and, and, and cultural rights. So. The whole system is somehow uh, uh, responsive uh, and has some tools to improve uh, the situation. Of course, as I said, there are, there are, there are soft uh, tools. They are not something we, uh, I remember when you teach your students, they're always uh, disappointed. They are, so if you, if you request something, uh, you can't do anything. Of course, you cannot send the police and, 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 and then make sure that the uh, opinions are being enforced. That is not that, that, that system. The system is, as I said, based on kind of a mutual understanding, which sometimes works better, sometimes work, works wor uh, uh, worse. 
depending on the, the political situation of the, of the given country. Now, let me, uh, as I promised, because we are approaching, now let me look at the, um, at the, um, uh, at the uh, uh, report of, I want to, uh, I want to just briefly discuss with you a report um, of the uh, Committee on Economic and Social Rights. This report was adopted in May 2011. And the report is always uh, composed, I mean, there's a small introduction, which is irrelevant, then there are positive aspects. To be frank, these positive aspects are also very short, because it is not the task of the city bodies to praise the country, say, oh, how good you are. No, just positive aspects, very short. They say, okay, we are happy that you have uh, ratified the given uh, treaty, or that in case of Russian Federation, that you have, for example, uh, uh, that you establish Minister of Regional Development of the Russian Federation uh, with responsibility for implementation of policies on ethnic minority issue, that you have adopted a federal strategy of development on rural areas. So, so they, uh, they are, but there is something. And then comes to the most uh, important one, which is called principal subjects of concerns and recommendation. Hmm. Mm. I will tell you what was the first, but then, as I said, I ask you to be a member of that committee and to say what you, from your own, you are very conscious uh, citizens here, you know, uh, very intelligent, knowing what's going on in your home, and what would be your suggestions? Uh, I will ask each, each, not each of you, we not have time, unfortunately, but chosen by random. Okay, so first recommendation was to make, uh, to make a, a right justiciable. Uh, uh, um, uh, it means also that this, that the rights, economic and social rights, should be, uh, some of those rights should be um, assessed by courts. That you should go to court uh, uh, with, uh, 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 when there is clear violation of economic and social rights. That, uh, but the problem is, uh, it's not even a question of law, but a question of training lawyers, in particular judges uh, and prosecutors, uh, that uh, those rights can be directly used before the court. So that was the one important uh, 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 um, important information, and I will say also another one. Very interesting, because I, I heard that you have a meeting with the Upernomocioni, uh, so the committee recommends that the state party disseminate widely among its population information about the methods of work of the Office of the Human Rights Commissioner. Uh, and they, uh, so the committee was concern that the population as large does not know what this Upanorsion is doing. Have you, have you heard about him before you came here? Ombudsman. Ombudsman. Have you heard about him before you came here? Yes, yes or not? So oh, that gentleman heard something. He's the only one. Yes. Nobody else heard anything. You see? Here we have Ah, see. So uh, yeah, but for honor, it's very special. She's I told you. She's a student. For oh, honor, it's very special. As I told you, but the others, you know, so it means that committee was right. Committee was right. You don't know about the work of the of the commission. And what else? There is a, apparently there is a law in uh, maybe they. I don't know if it changes that you can you can send a petition to the ombudsman only when you have fulfilled other methods, other means. And the committee said no, because petitions to ombudsmen should be accepted regardless. If you have exhausted other uh, legal methods or not. That is the, the essence of the ombudsman system. Okay, now, 
Now, ha ha ha. What you would be? What would be your recommendation? Hmm? Who is ready? You, you gentlemen, you look very intelligent. Tell me, what would be? What is your name? Murat. Murat. Okay, Murat is uh, representing the Economic and Social Committee. And what would you recommend to the Russian Federation about economic and social cultural rights? Um, maybe the same, uh, to to let people know how this mechanism work. Oh, so oh you believe that it's uh, the, the, the valid point, yes? That is not, not enough information. He said that there's also information about the work is not adequate. So, uh, so uh, he's confirming. I, 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 based on your reaction, I think that he's right. Because he means that it's not w widely known. But you know what was the, the third, uh, the second, uh, uh, the second uh, uh, very important uh, recommendation? The same as Kazakhstan did in the UPR, <laughs> fight with corruption. You believe maybe, but that was three years ago, maybe. Is it still valid? You see, you believe that the corruption is still a problem? Oh, you'll be very corrupted, I guess. <laughs> you see? You, see, you believe? What's your name? I do? I gul. I gul. Because, um, and so you say, what do you do, my What do you do, my dear? Is it corruption? Is it a big problem? Or not? It's already the past. I don't know. In all countries. And you always met with some kind of corruption? And you met with some kind of problem with corruption? No, I know. I know, yes. Yes, yes. The same in my country. Nobody met, but he, everybody knew people who use it. Yeah? But Richard, only this pretty basically corruption is at school. Or not about the attack that Richard was taking. I hope so. I am disappointed. I thought that was something. No, okay, corruption. Corruption, yes. Uh, and that is the, no, I will skip the name because uh, you may not know because they are uh, complaining here about, uh, mm, uh, about some uh, situation of indigenous people. You know what it is not it? Indigenous people? Ludy kaki in Russian language? Karyanne, da. In Siberia, in the North Siberia, uh, that, uh, uh, that they are Mm, uh, the right to the free access to natural resources and then uh, is, is being seriously damaged. So, but that probably you don't know, unless you are from the region and unless you have been, because that is probably, I guess, it's something which is not that widely known. Uh, ah, you know what was the, uh, who wants to who wants to propose something? Is any? Hmm. Yeah, why? Uh, all, only now it struck me that there is a huge imbalance as far as gender is concerned. Ah, problem. In Poland, also, when in such schools, 80% of the children. Why? Because they are more interested in the problem of the rights of the man, and the women only think about money. And how do you think? Получить деньги, то это нельзя заниматься правами человека, идти где-то э, в цивильные суды или другие суды и там, там зарабатывать. Но надо оценить таких, как Бурад и другие коллеги, которые здесь женщины. Вот уважайте на них, потому что их немного, надо их сохранять. Э, э, тогда, окей, so what is the next, uh, uh, you know, that the committee is concerned that enjoyment of certain rights depends on registration. So that you have certain social rights if you are registered in, uh, in Voronezh or in Kazan for that matter. And they say that the committee recommends the lack of registration, of residence registration, and other personal identity documents should not hinder enjoyment of economic, social, and cultural rights. I don't know if, if, if this has been changed or not. Yet. It's still a problem. You understand? Registration. 
что регистрация – самый важный элемент, чтобы получили которые э, социальные э, или другие э, права. И комитет «no» is wrong. It should not be, should not be. Um, in my country, it, it has been changed. And even we abolished obligatory ed right now. It's a, it's a trend. But of course, I mean, uh, Russia is bigger, so maybe... Uh, uh. And what is important also, the committee says that in Russian Federation, I don't know, maybe, as I said, it was four years ago, so it may have changed. So there is lack of general law prohibiting discrimination in state party. General law. Нет такой областного устав, который бы запрещал дискриминацию. So he, they said that the committee calls upon state party to adopt the general basic law prohibiting all form of discrimination. Uh, now, now also the committee is complaining about uh, measures which uh, the, to improve the situation of people with disabilities or invalidus uh, here. What else? No oh, gender equality. Uh, for example, uh, the question of compulsory labor, uh, compulsory labor as a part of the uh, punishment that, that should be abolished. Uh, now. And then what is very important also, it becoming more and more important in many countries, also many with the sexual, sexual harassment in the workplace. Sexual harassment in the workplace. You know this, and it, 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 it is really a big, it became also in many countries all these funny remarks to your colleague, and oh, how beautiful you look, and oh, to, 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 well, you can do it, if you do it, but you can do it in a way uh, to, to degrade uh, that person or to really uh, uh, make this uh, kind of a, a, a sexual advances. So there is a very problem, uh, pro uh, so that, um, um, the committee is also requesting the state party to do more about this question. Another one was uh, the discrimination of women based on, 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 uh, on the payroll. <laughs> you know, when I, my, my PhD I did 40 years ago, equality of men and women in Poland, nothing, not big changes. When you want to know who, who is, uh, which, which profession is dominated by female, look at the um, at the uh, uh, level of salaries. This profession, which are higher on the payroll, they are dominated by men. Those, it, same is the legal profession. Um, those, uh, when the, the, the highest high payroll, the highest uh, salaries, the more men. So that is it. why? Not because uh, men are m m more capable. In the contrary, normally women are better. But the question is that, uh, that, that the whole system is working in such a way that women cannot uh, achieve the uh, equality. That's what the committee is saying here also. Uh, and then um, uh, there's a the question of informed econo informal economy. Informal economy, illegal economy. So it's a, a illegal migration of labor yeah, from Tajikistan, mainly, well, not only, of course, Uzbekistan, many countries. Illegal workers are coming and they are not protected at all at any aspect. In my country, uh, we are having from Ukraine, but uh, also quite a number of illegal, but the, the system is working now to make them legal. To make them legal, and I, 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 I should tell you, for example, in my region, which is western part, I'm from Poznań, Poznań, the western part of of Poland, uh, and um, uh, my in-laws, so the family of my wife, they are farmers, and they're telling me that absolutely they cannot find any workers to, to, to work in the, in, in the farms because um, uh, some people left the uh, country and went, uh, went to, the, uh, to, to Germany or, or to the United Kingdom, so they are inviting Ukrainians, and, but then you have to do it in a very legal manner. You have to, you have to send an application, how many people you are, you are accepting, for how long, what kind of protection you are giving to them, and so that it starts to work, and I hope that it will be working like this. 
Also, the committee is complaining about the low, low level of the minimum wage. I don't know what is the, what is your, any, anybody knows here what is the minimum wage? Minimalna zarpłata w gospodarstwie jednej. Anybody knows? How much is? What it will be in euro? Uh, 100 euro? 100 euro. 100. 100 euro, the colleague said. What is your name? Rustem. Huh? Rustem. Rustem. So Rustem said there is 100 euro minimum made. Oh, well, in, 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 what is in Poland? I think it's, I guess, in Poland it's right now 400 euro. But still it's nothing. I mean, I mean okay, you can survive probably uh, at a very minimum level, but I don't think that you can survive. For 100 euros, it's almost, and you are working, huh? And you got that. So they say, no, it's too, it's too, it's too low. Uh, and then, for example, the committee is concerned about the right to strike for workers of certain public sectors, such as federal courier communication, railway workers, municipal, municipal employees, and others that uh, they don't have a right to strike. Uh, no, in Poland they do, and uh, with railway you always. You may be in trouble, like in Germany, you know that they blocked the whole country by going on strike. Uh, no, there is some, uh, something about, for example, uh, domestic violence, domestic violence, trafficking in women, uh, children, uh, sexual exploitation, uh, street children. Have you ever, have you, um, have you ever done anything to, to, I mean, to lock houses? street children system is concerned. To be frank, I, I read quite a, recently a very dramatic kind of a reportage by one of the famous journalists who came across this street children. Uh, uh, of course, it's not at that level as, for example, in India. But still, it's a, it is a phenomenon which is very, very, very dangerous. Now, the other is uh, uh, a uh, question of uh, standard of living, adequate standard of living, that there is apparently, they estimated here, 18.7 million people in Russian Federation who are denied adequate standard of living and continue to live below the poverty line. By the way, if you want to, if you ask me what does it mean adequate standard of living, that I will send you to the general comment of the committee who says depends on the country. Because the adequate standard uh, living will be different in Germany, in Poland, or in Federation. Because of course it depends on, but, but at least it, it's some elementary, uh, elementary elements must, must, must be, be there, like, like, like house, like water, like health system and so forth. And there's also the problem of, are we, uh, also a problem of homelessness. Homelessness, that is uh, probably in every country in, uh, in Europe, but also in, in, in your country. Uh, drug addiction. Uh, no, and then uh, access to reproductive and sexual health service for women in rural areas. Uh, and also many number of children who do not attend any school. Mm. And what else that we are approaching the end? Uh, no, there is question of of of, of uh, the situation of Chechnya. We we'll, we can leave it. And also, as I said, uh, uh, disabilities people. And so that is more or less uh, what the committee identified. But I invite you. You can find it very easily. Um, I have here also in the Russian. Uh, so. If you want to have it, maybe I can give it to, uh, uh, to colleagues that they can disseminate. But I think it's worthwhile for you to look at this. Has anybody of you seen it or not before? And that is the problem, that it means that the Russian Federation is violating the recommendation, the last one. Because the last recommendation is to disseminate widely in the local language that report. So how come that the country has not disseminated since you have not seen it? It means that you are not, uh, but you, as you are students of human rights, you should be, for you should be a very interesting instrument uh, or to look at this and to 
so you can judge to what extent it is uh, uh, your feeling of uh, humanity is met by this one. I'm telling you a funny story about my country, when, uh, about my country in, in, in the Committee on the Political Right. Uh, when I was in the committee, Poland came, and uh, when a when, uh, country to, uh, of my country is coming, I'm not able to participate. I, I cannot participate, I have to abstain. And there was a lady came from Poland, she was very forceful in the, the, in the feminist movement. And she was very good. She was well prepared, she gave to everybody documents, the data, to all. Co and as a result, the committee, five, First, not that committee, but committee on human rights committee, committee who is dealing with political rights. Face, first, five recommendations were situation of discrimination of women. Well, I was a bit, even I am, I am fighter, but I was a bit surprised because we are having uh, some other serious problems of human rights, not only discrimination, but why it was? Because she was very good. She was very good and she gave um, uh, good materials and then she influenced, she influenced uh, other members of the committee, that they adopted the uh, uh, report like this, so uh, uh, and, and, and complained about violation of rights of women in, in my country. So uh, it's also sometimes subjective what you see, because that may be the committee got uh, better, uh, more, uh, more detailed information about some aspects, may not have about some other aspects, and so on. I, I guess that we are slowly, uh, I guess that we are slowly approaching. Yeah, uh, we are slowly approaching the end, probably. Uh, because that I was giving a time, but I think I'm around and I, uh, I will be here. I was told I will be here for your moot court as well. I'm staying till for today and tomorrow. And uh, if you will have, uh, I have, you have a, a, a demand to raise your hand and to ask something right now. Why not? Oh, yes, gentlemen, finally, somebody is giving me a chance. Thank you. Uh, Jean-Baptiste Kourou, Friendship in, uh, University of Russia. Uh, I have two questions. The first one concerns uh, the political uh, relations between states, uh, I mean international relations. As you know, uh, they were adopted to convenience uh, in '66 because they didn't agree uh, on adopting yeah, one. One, one document. So uh, we know that uh, political misunderstanding between states has uh, a big influence on how the human rights are uh, protected and respected in different uh, countries. What is being done now to avoid this uh, this influence of political uh, processes, of political uh, misunderstanding between states uh, on the human rights. My second question is um, about the economic, social, and cultural rights, as we are talking about them, in Europe. Uh, we know that the European Convention of, uh, uh, of Human Rights uh, doesn't cover the, uh, the economic, social, and cultural mm -hmm. uh, rights. Uh, and it means that uh, the European Court doesn't deal with this, uh, these rights. Which organ, which uh, body, apart these national courts, deals with the violations of the, the economic, uh, social, and cultural uh, uh, violations of, of these rights? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Just quickly, first question, uh, the answer is uh, <laughs> no big changes. If the country will disagree, it's not a misunderstanding, it should disagree, totally politically, fundamentally disagree, there is no way how we can overcome this. Of course, there is the only way is to try to put a, a social pressure or, uh, and then try to uh, create, a, well, right now, right now, human rights at the international level is in a retreat. It's a retreat. As less and less people uh, in, uh, at the international level and European level are really ready to force the human rights. For example, we are ready to accept limits on our privacy because we are afraid of terrorism. So we accept a lot of, 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 of measures recently adopted. We, I'm we, 
by we I'm saying people. Uh, they, they simply, okay, you said to me, fine, you put a camera, we have a big, there no problem, should we put a camera in the schools? But yes, we should put a camera because uh, drug dealers are entering schools, but uh, it, it is not solving any problem, to be frank, because drug dealers will quickly avoid any camera and will be doing their job. But, so, but there is an unfortunate subject for another, another um, long discussion. I, I, I'm pessimistic. I don't think that there is, at the moment, especially is, is better than it used to be. No, it's still a uh, huge, big, big uh, um, diver diversity between, and you see it on any international body as well. And as far as the second question, yes, economic and social rights are not covered by economic and uh, by the European court. As far as the European Union is concerned, that is better because uh, we have a Charter of Fundamental Rights and you can go to Luxembourg uh, if there are your, human, your economic. But as far as the Council of Europe, uh, there is the only very soft uh, body, which is a European Social Charter. And there is the European Social Charter, which some countries accept, some not, some partially. Uh, you, can, you can send um, the communication to the um, um, uh, Social Charter experts, but there is not like court you will never have a court decision. You may have opinion on that, so it's a very soft system of protecting, so it's not a good system of protecting economic and social rights uh, within the European uh, Council, uh, Council of Europe uh, system. It's better at the European Union, but not the European Council. We need Council. to respect right to food. Yeah, right to food and right to, uh, uh, right to get rid of me and then, and, and, and. <laughs> Тогда, окей, okay. тогда мы кончаем. Большое спасибо за ваше внимание. Извиняюсь за то, что был такой...